Shalom everyone, my Hebrews and Shebrews, this is Oilfield Disciple, and we are going to do a daily reading, Proverbs chapter 11. As I looked over it, um, I think we can um, extract a few things from it to look at just this day alone, as this day is a, a day that is about as important as Pearl Harbor, a day that was said, a day that will live in infamy. Um, this is a day that every American says we shall not forget. Well, we've already forgot. We forgot the next day. But I'll get into that as we cruise with Jesus. So let this message bless you, encourage you, and even frustrate you. Go look this up for yourself. Let's look at what the text says. Proverbs 11. Give me just a second here. I'm hung up. All right. There, it focused. A false scale is an abomination to Yahweh, but a perfect weight his delight. Pride comes, then comes shame. That text come through, sorry. The integrity of the straight ones guides them, but the slipperiness of treacherous destroys them. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteous of the perfect makes his way straight, but by his own wrongness the wrong one falls. The righteousness of a straight one delivers them, but the treacherous are caught by greed. When a wrong man dies, expectancy perishes, and the ambition of the wicked shall be lost. The righteous is delivered from distress, and the wrong one takes his place. The defiled one destroys his neighbor with his mouth, but the righteous delivered by knowledge. When the righteous prosper, the city rejoices. And when the wrong perish, there is shouting. I wrote a sound of joy, triumph. By the blessing of the straight city is exalted. By the mouth of the wrong, it is overthrown. He who lacks heart despises his neighbor, but a man of understanding keeps silence. A slanderer is a revealer of secrets, but one with trustworthy spirit conceals the matter. Without guidance, the people fall, but in, but in a great council there is safety. He who is guaranteed for a stranger suffers harm, but one who hates shaking hands and pledge is safe. A woman showing favor obtains glory, but ruthless men obtain riches. A lovingly committed man is rewarding a lovingly committed man is rewarding his being, but he who is cruel troubles his own flesh. The wrong one earns false wages, but the one sowing righteousness a true reward. Thus righteousness leads to life, and one pursuing evil to his own death. The perverse of heart are an abomination to Yahweh, but the perfect in the way are his delight, the way, that's his Torah. Hand to hand, the evil one does not go unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall escape. Like a ring of gold in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who lacks good sense. The desire of the righteous is only good. The expectancy of the wrong is wrath. There is one who scatters, yet increases more, and one who withholds more than is right, but it comes to poverty. The generous being enriched, and he who waters is also watered himself. That's discipling and being discipled. The people curse him with the people curse him who withholds grain, but blessing is on the head of him who sells it. He who earnestly seeks good seeks what is pleasing, but to him who seeks evil it comes to him. He who trusts in his riches falls, but the righteous flourish like a leaf. He who troubles his own house inherits wind, and the fool is servant to the wise of heart. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who is winning lives is wise. See the righteous in the earth shall be rewarded. How much more the wrong and the sinner. Okay. I know that's a whole lot there. Um, we could take a whole lot out of that. Uh, verse 14 says, With guiding, Without guidance, the people fall, but in a great counselor, there's safety. All right, let's look at that verse for just a second. Without guidance. As I look around and see the pastors that are teaching today and preaching, they're wicked deceivers. You know, they're teaching people that they don't have to follow the law. They're teaching people that there is no sin, you know, and no, nothing about repentance. Well, it says the people fall without guidance. Is that not what we see today? I look around, 
Uh, even those that are on the fence about following God, um, they're falling because they're being told they don't have to do anything. All they got to do is believe there's a God. Well, that's not enough. That's what the scriptures say. All those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. But what are you calling on the Lord for? Who's calling on the Lord? This, this bull of going down to the altar and uh, saying this little prayer and asking Jesus into your heart um, is ridiculous. Because then we let those people that come to the altar and say that little prayer, we just let them go live however they want. We don't explain any more about our Lord. We just leave them there. We leave them in the dark. Do we not? That's why I call these TBM pastors wicked deceivers. I call many of these churches around here dead because they're preaching a false gospel. They're, fe they're preaching health, wealth, and prosperity. And that's not always the case with God. God has crushed me to get me to believe in Him, to trust in Him. God has crushed me and my wife. We used to be completely financially sound. We had money in the bank. We went on vacations, lavish vacations, and now we do all we can do to pay our bills. And as, as, as I've come to realize that when I had money, I trusted in myself. I had no use for God. When I'd get in trouble, I'd cry out to God, but then that was it. Well, that's what this whole generation is about, crying out to God when they're in trouble, but they give God no praises. They give our y'all nothing in return. He does it. Man, we can go over this over and over again. Saved by grace through faith. I get that. Now that comes back to we're either saved from the beginning before the foundations. God give us that salvation or he did not. And we're destined to hell. Now some people don't like hearing that, but that's the way it is. All right, so now that I'm saved, i got to do something. And it's plain and simple as that. But we don't want to do that. Okay, so the people are falling because they have no leadership. Jeremiah 3.15 says, I shall give you pastors and shepherds after my own heart to teach you and guide you my ways. Well, there's a few pastors like myself who are calling sin, sin, who are preaching the truth, and numbers dwindle. Uh, well, most people don't want to hear that truth. So this day, this day, 9-11, 2001, 9-11 was a day that America was brought to her knees. What did we learn from that? Not a damn thing. If anything, we've become more treacherous, more uh, wicked, as the scriptures say right there, the greed. Now, you can uh, believe whatever you want about 9-11. Uh, myself, I don't necessarily uh, hold to the idea that uh, Muslim terrorists decided to go blow up World Trade Centers in the Pentagon and all that. I believe that came from within our own government. Now, that is, uh, that's a topic that usually will piss people off. But let's just say, just for uh, argument's sake, uh, the, the Muslim terrorists did do this. What have we done about it? We've opened our borders and allowed them to pour in. We've allowed them to take public office um, to further their agenda now. I'm, I'm totally anti-Islam. Um, it's a wicked, wicked, wicked uh, religion. I don't care what anybody says. Go read it. Go understand it. Um, and you'll see that. So let's just say they did. Why are we allowing them to, to take a foothold here in America? We say we, we'll, we'll always remember. Well, what are we remembering? We're remembering that the Trade Center used to be there, the Twin Towers used to be there, and uh, you know, all that, but now it's gone. Is that what we remember? You know, the best thing about uh, pre having President Obama in there for eight years is it did shake and wake up a few Americans. It did wake and shake up a few patriots that was asleep. Uh, I was one of them. That's the best thing to get, but I don't know. I'm going to get into a whole lot of conspiracy theories here and probably piss a bunch of people off. And I'm going to try not 
I don't mind pissing people off, that doesn't bother me a bit. Um, but I don't want to get into a bunch of rabbit holes here on this video. I want to kind of stick to what the scriptures say. One day, there's a day coming that the wicked will get their due. There's a day coming that the righteous will get their due. That's what that Proverbs is talking about. There's a um, distinction between righteousness and, and, and wickedness. Let me write this number down real quick. Um, pause for just a minute. Give me just a second, guys. Um, what else we got on that? The ruthless men obtain riches. Now I believe that. If you look at the Clintons, they've obtained quite righteousness, or uh, quite riches. Um, and through that system, there's a certain few elites that are in power, and I believe that. But their due will come. What else did it say? A loving, committed man is rewarding his being. Alright, so... I'm gonna put myself in that in that category right there. A loving, committed man is rewarding in his being. Now I'm not looking for rewards and riches. I'm looking in rewards for furthering the kingdom, telling the truth, spitting the truth out there, angering 90 people every time I talk to 100, planting that seed in a few, and having one come to the kingdom. That's where my riches are. Speaking the truth and waking people up. That's where... Man, I'm sorry about this road. That's where my reward comes. That's where I seek my reward. Like I said in one of my messages um, at, at the pulpit here, I think it was last week. If I shall remain in poverty so that one more can come to the kingdom, then I shall remain in poverty for the rest of my life. I'm happy with that. I'm fine with that. See, I have a loving, committed wife that's going to stick with me no matter what. Um, and it's been proven. What I've done to her in the past prior to Christ, if she stuck through that, she's going to be around for this. Um, so me and my wife are a team that I'm fine with. I'm fine to go through the rest of my life another 60 years, um, if that be the case spitting the truth and fighting for the kingdom, fighting with the, or fighting against the wicked powers. Um, and I know we don't fight, fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities um, of darkness in high places. That's Ephesians 6, 12. I get that. But we got flesh and blood we got to go against too, because there's some wicked individuals. I'm just, I'm, I'm appalled at how many posts on Facebook are remember 9-11, but yet I don't see anything done about it. You know, if you're going to speak on something, at least do something about it. You know what I mean? Uh, if not, sit down and shut up. Words are absolutely useless whenever you're talking like that. Now, yes, words have power. Proverbs 18, 21 or 24, life and death are in the power of the tongue. See, we got a problem in this nation. And we're killing babies. We say 3,000 people died in 9-11. Uh, in well, it's about that close to how many babies die um, each month here in here in America. Each month. That's something we should remember. That's something we should be doing something about. Now, yes, I I hate it that those, those uh, individuals had to die. Um, it sounds insensitive, but that is life. Um, the job that I, I do out here, I could die at any moment. Anytime I open a hatch to gauge a tank, that could kill me. Um, I understand that. We all have to understand that our mortality as we go through our day. This could be our last day. This could be our last minute or last breath. 
But at the end of the day, we've got to realize that it's God, it's Yahweh, that gives us each and every breath. And if we don't start turning to Him and giving Him the due and giving Him the reverence for that breath, rather than preaching and teaching this bullshit prosperity gospel of health, wealth, and prosperity, come to God so He can give you wealth. Uh, no, it's come to God so you can serve Him. That's what we got to remember. But no, we don't forgot that. Um, Hosea 4 and 6 says that we, or that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. That knowledge is not knowledge of how to do daily operations. That's a knowledge of God. That's a knowledge that we have forgotten the knowledge to fear our Yahweh. That we have forgotten that He has set a certain standard for us to live by. And we trample on it. We trample on the cross. We trample on everything about God and then expect Him to bless us. Like I said, we're killing babies at 3,000 babies a month. 220 a day or 2,200 a day, I think it is. 2,200 a day. No, 220 a day. Something like that. I don't remember. I used to... I got that number twisted. I, I don't know. Um, it's a lot. Let's go with that. It's more, it's each month more than what that trade center people buy. Uh, do you feel what I'm saying? Where's our reverence to God? Where is our reverence to Yeshua? You know, if somebody does something for you, you should be gratitude, you should have gratitude and show that gratefulness by doing something. Tired of hearing people say I'm a Christian and their lives look filthy. You come to church on Christmas and Easter, which are wicked pagan holidays. You call what God said was an abomination good, and you think you're going to the glory. You're going to hell if you keep living like that, believing like that. This ain't a game. I wish I could sit up here and preach that everybody's going to heaven. But I can't. Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell today. I hope this message will bless you, encourage you, and I know it pissed some of you off. That's all right. That's what I'm here for. Go look this up for yourself. Um, I pray blessings. I pray that y'all y'all will change your your ways and turn. Those who haven't, those who are, continue on what you're doing. Continue preaching the truth. Pretending, continue walking in righteousness and being that light into the world. I pray this in Yeshua's mighty name for each of us. This old field disciple, I will catch you on the next ride.